The latest Nvidia graphics cards are here at last, and honestly, this is one GPU I've really been looking forward to. I build a few systems now and then for friends and family, and money is always the biggest bottleneck. With many of the flagship cards costing north of $1,000, high-end PC gaming is pretty intimidating to get into. However, to play the latest games at full HD resolutions and even 1440p, you can get away with some surprisingly more affordable models. Now with the new RTX 4060 being the most affordable 4000 GPU to date, I'm eager to see just how much gaming fun can be had without selling off your firstborn to get the fastest cards. Of course it's hot on the hills of the RTX 4060 Ti which we reviewed recently and naturally we're expecting it to perform a little bit behind that. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hello mate, you alright? Yeah, just got all the bits from my banging new gaming PC. Just got to put it together, it's going to be so much better than yours. Oh, right. What did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature packed motherboard and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See? Miles ahead of yours. <laughs> you you realise that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <gasps> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits. Or if you're wanting that all important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver. Thanks. But where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> you call me the stupid one. Of course, this card is less likely to be marketed to 3000 series owners, but those long-standing GTX 1000 series users who've been using the GTX 1050, 1060, and even the 16 series cards, which are still sitting at the top of the Steam hardware survey. For those users, these sub $300 cards are going to offer some very significant performance and feature updates, such as DLSS, ray tracing, and AV1 encoding, to name but a few. Nvidia's testing over multiple games showed an 8 to 14 times performance leap, and I don't doubt it, as a lot has changed in GPU performance in the last 6 to 7 years. Now we don't have a founders card on this launch, so for our full fat GPU review, we'll be using the Inno3D RTX 4060 Twin X2, as it's both an MSRP card and comes with a reference speed GPU clock, although an OC model is available if you wanted to seek that one out for yourself. The card features 3072 CUDA cores, which is quite a step down from the 4352 of the 4060 Ti, and the boost clock is down to 2.46 GHz, which is a little bit under the 2.54 GHz of the 4060 Ti. What is interesting, however, is that even though this has fewer CUDA cores than the RTX 3060 did, as that had 3584, that only ran with a boost clock of 1.78 GHz, which is quite a lot slower. Now both cards use the same 8GB of GDDR6 memory and the older 3060 came with either an 8GB or 12GB variant, something that I guess from the 4060 Ti reviews has been, well, quite the hot topic. Now Inno3D always deliver great looking graphics cards and while this may be more of a budget focused model, it certainly doesn't look it. This is a really slick and professional looking design that's sure to look good in a gaming PC build, but is smart and tidy enough to not look out of place in your office rig if you really needed it there. The shroud is plastic construction, but it's all really good quality materials, with a really nice finish that gives it a two-tone metal and plastic look. There are even some exposed screws that give it a slightly more industrious look as well. As for the fans, they're both quite large at 90mm, with 11 fins, and given the size of the card, isn't exactly huge at 250 by 105 by 40 mm It means that these two fans cover a significant amount of the heatsink, so cooling performance should be excellent. Being just 40mm deep, this card only takes up two slots, which is great for those of you in small form factor or slimmer profile PC cases. The more expensive models are notoriously huge, so it's nice to see this is just the shape and size we've been used to for many years now. Now regarding power delivery, the RTX 4060 from Inno3D gets by with just a single 8-pin power connector and doesn't require the newer header, meaning your existing power supply will do just fine. Plus, those of you with lower wattage PSUs of around 5 to 600 watts should be absolutely fine, even if you have a power hungry CPU. Now, the card is surprisingly closed up on the sides, so the bulk of the airflow will actually exhaust out of the back of the card and through this huge cutout in the backplate. Actually, the backplate is quite telling as the PCB actually stops about where the power connector is in the middle, so the heatsink is actually twice the length of the card itself. Also, at the rear, there are three display ports and a single HDMI port, so plenty of room for multi monitor setups. Taking the card apart is simple enough, and there's a full metal backplate on the rear and a plastic shroud on the front of the card. 
The fans are mounted directly to the heatsink with a frame that surrounds the aluminium fins, while the radiator is a single piece but there's a large heat pipe running through it to ensure it can move most of the heat to the rear of the card and therefore be easily exhausted. The PCB itself is, well, cute as a button and actually surprisingly simple to look at. It uses the RT8845A multi-phase PWM controller in a 4 plus 1 configuration, with 4 to the GPU and 1 to the memory. And there are 4 SK Hynix 2 gig chips on here too, given the card is 8 gig of VRAM. But there's certainly room on the PCB to take that to 16 gig if it's ever needed. In terms of the MOSFETs, nothing that we haven't seen before, with the QM3092M6 and QM3098M6 VRMs. So to look at the card actually seems very, very interesting, especially considering its price point. But the key important thing that we want to know today is how does it perform? So let's get into those glorious benchmarks. So with performance out of the way for the GPU side of things, how does the cooler perform? Well for the temperatures, we ran the card for an hour long test of F1 2022. And here we saw that the GPU temps reached a high of 71 degrees, however for the most part it sat around the 70 degree mark throughout this test. For the hotspot temperature it ran even hotter, sitting at 85 degrees max for the duration of the test, while the fan speed, the card actually ramped up to about 1900 RPM, which was still barely audible, all while the GPU power usage reached a max of 119.5 watts throughout our testing. Amazingly, these new cards are launching at just $299, or about £280 here in the UK. I mean, that's impressive, as the last time I saw a GPU price begin with a 2, it was 2000 Now obviously I'm not going to be throwing my RTX 4090 on eBay and trading it in for an RTX 4060, but let's not beat around the bush here. Yes it's the budget model, and the performance isn't bleeding edge stuff, but it's also the cheapest card too, and quite simply, that's the reason it will sell. 
Now, if you're looking to upgrade from the old GTX class cards from five to seven years ago, this is a bit of a no brainer right now. The elite gamers who live in the comments section and the armchair experts on Reddit will scoff, but the Steam survey will be full of these soon enough as it is a good card with a specific intention, out with the old, in with the new. Now, when it comes to performance, the RTX 4060 is unsurprisingly the slowest card in the 4000 series lineup, as Nvidia tend to start with the flagship and then work down the range. It scored 5,370 in 3D Mark, which is actually not that bad though, and about 18% below that of the RTX 4060 Ti, but also remarkably similar to the RTX 2080, which scored 5,566. This can also be seen in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, one of many examples, with the RTX 4060 scoring 95, 63 and 36 FPS at 1080p, 1440p and 4K respectively. Pretty much identical again to the RTX 2080, which scored 92, 64 and 40 FPS. To put this into perspective, the RTX 2080 was a card that retailed for £749 when it launched five years ago. So you've got to give it to Nvidia on this one, there is some kind of progression, at least in terms of getting the performance but for a cheaper price. Now I know the experts will be in the comments waggling fingers about VRM or how you can get a second hand card for something less, but honestly, it's just ignoring the fact that the performance is clearly just fine on this card, that people like new stuff with a warranty, and that it's just nice to have nice things that are new and shiny. At this price range, it's a competent card that will get the budget gamers another five plus years of affordable gaming joy. Now, if you've been waiting for a reasonably priced card to replace your GTX 1000 series, it may not be the perfect graphics card, but this is it right now. Reliable performance and sensible prices abound, this card launches cheaper than the 1060 did, at least when you adjust for inflation, as £239 in 2016 money is now around £306 in today's market. Now, if the Steam hardware survey has taught us anything, it's that the 60, I guess, class cards sell by the truckload, and I see no reason why this new one will be an exception. Given nearly 65% of Steam users still game at 1080p, the likes of the RTX 2060 is more than enough for most gamers. You get decent rasterization performance and so forth, but this just goes one step further, and that's where I'm getting at in terms of sort of progression and evolution. With this, you get DLSS, AV1, and other modern technologies that all make it a nice upgrade for those on older hardware, but likely an ill investment for those wanting to replace cards from the last year or two. And that about sums it up. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Sorry that I actually wasn't in the video. I'm currently in a hotel room in Egypt and recording this as voiceover. So a bit of an interesting one for me as well. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And let me know in the comments section below what you actually think of this card. Have Nvidia done enough? Is the eight gig of VRAM a real sticking point? Or is this going to be the next big thing as we've seen with the GTX 1060 really sort of I guess filling up that Steam hardware survey and becoming one of the most popular graphics cards that's ever existed. And who knows, what's AMD gonna bring to the table next as well? They need to do something, it needs to be better, and potentially also needs to be cheaper. So you have it. Uh, yeah, thanks guys, it's been a pleasure. Bit of a weird one, hotel room. Hopefully there's not too much echo. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys.